Hey guys, welcome back. In this video, I'll show you how to build an authentication system um, using Flask and Python. So before I begin, I would like to explain how we're going to build it. So we're going to be using this library called Flask Login, and we're going to be using Flask to build this. And uh, what Flask Login does is it's going to provide uh, user session management. It's going to handle the common tasks of logging in, logging out, remembering user sessions over an extended period of time. And we're going to leave the docs um, link in the description below also. And it also states everything that it does right here and it and states stuff that it won't do. And one thing that it won't do is handle user registration. So we're going to have to create uh, user registration ourselves and that's fairly easy. So with that being said, without further ado. So now that I've explained what we're going to do, we can start. So first off, I'll start off by installing packages. I have the commands for installing the packages um, in the description. If you're on Windows, copy the Windows command and paste it into your terminal and hit enter. If you're on Mac, copy the Mac command and paste it into the terminal and hit enter. So I'm just going to paste the Mac command right here. And um, mine's already installed. Mine's are already installed, so that's why it says requirement already satisfied. Yours might take um, 20 seconds to two minutes to install all of them. So now that we have gotten our packages installed, we can um, start creating our files and folders. So I'm going to click right here onto this icon, and then I'm going to click this new file icon, and then I'm going to create a file called app.py. And this is the Python file that we're going to be writing all of our apps code in. All right, and then I'm going to create two folders. One of them is going to be called templates. And this is where our HTML is going to go. And then another one of them is going to be called static. And this is where the CSS is going to go. So now that I've explained uh, creating the files and all that, we can finally start coding. And to do this, I'm just going to open up this app.py file, which, I've, which I have open right here. And the first line of code that we're going to be writing is from Flask import Flask. And this will import the Flask package. Next, I'll make the app instance. So I'll do app is equal to Flask, and then underscore underscore name right there. And now, whenever we go to our web page, we're going to hit a route, and that route will be a forward slash. And this is where all web pages hit once they're loaded. So for example, if you were to go to youtube.com, you'd see the recommended videos first, right? So this is basically that. So to do that, write this down. Okay, so this app.route means that whenever we hit this route, we're going to render the contents that are in the function. And in this case, we're going to render the content inside of this home. And um, the content inside of this home is this hello from class. So whenever we um, run our app and go to this route, we're going to have this rendered. Next, we're going to need a way to run our app. So I'm just going to do if underscore underscore name underscore underscore is equal to underscore underscore main underscore underscore. I'm going to do app dot run and then debug is equal to true um, I'm putting debug is equal to true so if we get any errors we can catch them immediately and now we can finally run our app so I'm just gonna so I'm just gonna list the stuff we have in our um, folder and I'm gonna run Python 3 app.py okay and to run it you're just gonna do Python 3 app.py if you're on Mac and do uh, and do Python app.py if you're on Windows so once I load this um, I'm gonna go to localhost at port 5000 and as you can see, when we hit this forward slash, it's going to render hello from Flask, which is what it's exactly supposed to do since hello from Flask is rendered at this route. So now that we have our home route set up and know how routing works, um, we can move on to rendering pages. So as you can see right here, we have return hello from Flask, and this is just rendering plain text. Um, but instead of rendering plain text, we want to return an HTML document and to do that I'm just going to open up Explorer go into templates and then create a new file called home.html you can name it whatever you want but um, for the sake of this tutorial I'm going to name it home.html so I'm going to do an exclamation point and then tab and then inside of here where it just has document I'm just going to rename this to home and then save the changes and in the body I'm just going to put uh, login authentication system in flask okay and Instead of returning this, we're going to return this. So to return that, I'm going to import render template. And then I'm just going to put return render template home.html. So what this does was previously we had return hello from Flask. But this time, it's going to return this template right here. And how this is going to work, how render template works, is that it goes into this templates folder. 
and then it's going to search for the file that's passed in. So right now we've passed in home.html, so it's going to search for that, and as you can see, it's here, so it's going to return the content inside of here. And we can test this out, so I'm just going to run our app using python3app.py. If you're on Windows, do pythonapp.py, of course, and then go here and then type in localhost at port 5000. And as you can see, whenever we hit the slash, it's going to return this. So our templates are rendering perfectly fine. Now we just need to create the login. So now that I've shown you how to render templates, we can start um, creating pages for the login and sign up. So to do this, um, we're going to do the same thing. I'm going to go into the templates folder and I've created two files and I've created login.html and register.html. And inside of login.html, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to do exclamation point and then tab. And then in the title, I'm just going to put login. And in, in this body, I'm just going to put uh, an h1 and I'm going to say login page. Okay, and then we're going to add that route to our app. So to do this app.route, and then when we go to slash login, we're going to return this login page. So return render template login.html. So if I go to slash login, it's going to show that right here. Now we do the same thing for sign up. So for sign up, since it's basically the same thing, except we're just changing a couple of words, I'm going to select all of this and then copy it and then paste it into register.html. So right here, instead of putting login, I'm just going to put register. And instead of putting login page, I'm just going to put register page. And we're going to be doing the same thing here also, but instead of putting login, we're going to put register. And inside of here, I'm just going to put slash register, and the function's name is going to be register, and then the file's name is register, so just do that. Now if I go into register, it's going to say register page. So our routing is working, but um, in, but we don't want to always you know adjust the URL to uh, decide what page we want to go to. So let's say I want to go to the home page, I don't want to have to go to slash. Let's say I want to go into the login page, I don't want to have to type that in. So we can add a button that will lead us to that page or a link that will lead us to that page. So I'm just going to go back to the home page. And then in home.html, what I'm going to do is actually in our app file, I'm going to import something called URL4, okay? And in home.html, I'm just going to make an a tag that will lead us to the login page. So I'm just going to do a href, and then I'm just going to have this right here, and then I'm just going to put login page. And then inside of this href, I'm just going to do URL4, and then a set of quotations, and then I'm going to put login. And what this is going to do is that whenever we um, press this, link, it's going to lead us to this login route right here. So I'm going to refresh this page. And if I click it, it brings us to this login route. Now we can do the same thing for sign up. And I'm just going to add a break, a line break after this. So I'm going to copy this line. And then since it's the same thing, I'm just going to go register. Register right here. And what this is going to do is just um, call this route right here. So if I refresh it, if I click register page, it leads me to here. If I click login page, it leads me to here. Okay, so this is how we know that our routing is working fine. And usually in login pages, um, if you don't have an account, it's gonna say it's gonna have a link for you to sign up. So we're gonna add that. And to do this, um, I'm just gonna copy the stuff from home.html right here. So I'm just gonna copy this uh, register line. So I'll just copy it right to that till there, and then um, I'm just gonna put. Uh, don't have an account, sign up. Okay, and if I go into the login page, it's going to say don't have an account, sign up, and it's going to lead to this register page. And in register pages, they have this thing where it says um, already have an account, log in. So to do that, I'm just going to copy the same thing. So copy the um, stuff for login, and then paste it right here. And instead of putting login page, I'm just going to put already have an account, log in. Okay, and then if I refresh it, it brings me to here. And if I click this, it brings me to here. And if I go into home, it has the uh, links for both pages. So now that I've showed you guys how to do routing and rendering templates, we can finally start working on the login authentication system. So first, I'd like to explain how this is going to work. So first, we're going to have a SQLite database, which will connect through using SQL Alchemy. Then in our database, we'll have a user table where our users will be stored. 
the users will have a username and a password. When we register, we'll have a form, and in that form, the users will type in a username and password for to create their account. When they press the submit button, the information that they typed in will be stored in the database in the user table. When we log in, we'll have a form that will include the username and the password, and um, those are going to be used to log in the user. When the user presses the login button, we'll filter the database for for the username that they entered. If there's a username that if the username that they entered shows up in the database, that means that their account is valid. And once it's valid, we're going to check if the password that they entered is correct or not. If the password is correct, then we're going to log them in and redirect them to a user database. So now that I've explained how our login authentication system is going to be built and how it's going to work, we can um, start creating the database. So to do this, I'm going to create a new file called database.db, and this is our database. So in order to connect to it, we're going to need SQL Alchemy. And um, when we installed our packages, this is one of the packages that we installed. So I'm going to do from flask underscore SQL Alchemy right here, import um, SQL Alchemy. And then right underneath this app right here, I'm going to um, create the database instance. So I'm going to do db is equal to SQL Alchemy and then pass an app. Next, um, we need to connect to this database file. So to do that, I'm just going to do app.config and then SQL Alchemy underscore database underscore URI is going to be equal to SQLite colon and then three forward slashes. So one, two, three database.db. So this line right here creates the database instance, and this line right here connects our app file to our Now that we have linked our app to our database, we can move on to creating database tables. But first, we need to add a secret key to our app, and the secret key is used to secure the session cookie. So right under here, I'm just going to put, I'm just going to type in app.config secret key. So secret underscore key. And then in a production environment, or if you were to deploy this, um, this would have to be something secretive. But for the simplicity of this tutorial, I'm just going to put this to something simple like this is a secret key. Next, we're going to import user mixin from Flask Login. And Flask Login is one of the um, packages that we installed um, at the package installation step. So I'm just going to type in from Flask underscore login import user mixin. And now we're ready to create our table. So to create our table, I'll just write the code down and then I'll explain um, afterwards so that I can avoid any sort of confusion. So this right here, what I've highlighted will be the table for our database and we're gonna have three columns. The ID column is the identity column for the user. The user the username is the user's name and db.string20 means that the username will have a maximum of 20 characters and the nullable equals to false basically means that whenever we're registering this field has to be en entered in and cannot be empty and the same thing goes for password the only difference is that um, the password has a maximum of 80 characters once it's been hashed so we have created our table um, in our app and now we just need to add these changes to our database file so to do that you're just going to open up your terminal using control backtick um, and then you're going to type in python or python 3 depending on your system and then you're going to do from app import db so what this is going to do is import this db variable from our app file right here app.py and then i'm going to hit enter and then I'm, you're just going to um, type in db.create underscore all and this is going to create um, all create all the tables that we have in our app file into our database. And then to exit out of the console, you can do control D or exit and then set a parentheses. Next, to see if the changes have been applied or not, you're just going to do SQLite3 database.db. And then you're going to type in tables. Um, so dot tables. And then if you see user, then that means that our table has been successfully created and we're done with the database creation part. And to exit out of this um, database, you're just going to do dot exit. So now we're done with the um, database table creation part. Um, in the next clip, I'll show you guys how to create the forms for registration. And oh, and also one thing that I forgot to mention, um, the username, we're going to put unique is equal, equal to true, okay? 
So unique is equal to true. And what this means is that um, there cannot be two or more of the same username. So each person will have a different username. All right, that's what unique is equal to true means. So now that we are done with um, creating databases, tables, and that we've linked it to our app, as well as added this unique is equal to true, we can start working on Flask forms. So I'm gonna import um, a few things. So I'm gonna import from um, Flask underscore WTF, import WT forms. And then from WT forms, import string field, uh, password field, and submit field. And then I'm gonna um, import from, from WT forms, dot validators, import uh, input required, length, and validation error, okay? And I'm just gonna paste some code in for the form and then I'll explain what it does in a bit. So right here, as you can see, we've created this registration form and this will inherit from the Flask form. And I'm just gonna space this out so that you can see better. So right here, the username is basically where we're gonna be entering our username. Um, it's gonna be a string field, meaning that um, we can view the characters. And then the validators is equal to input required, basically means that um, this has to be filled out the length, um, we have a minimum of four characters for our username and then a maximum of 20. And then the placeholder basically is a placeholder for the username. Um, and you use that with the render underscore KW right there. And the same thing goes for password. The differences are that the instead of using string field, it's gonna be a password field. So whenever we enter in our password, um, it's gonna be a bunch of black dots. And then the same thing for validators, it has it has to be filled out and then um, the minimum length for a password is four and then the maximum is 20. Now I know there in our database we have it set to 80, but that's but um, when we enter in our password, uh, whenever we register, the password, it first gets the original password and then hashes it. So we don't know how um, long the hash is going to be. So that's why we just have it set to 80 in the database. But the maximum um, amount of characters we can enter in for our password is 20. And then we have the same um, placeholder right there and it says password. And then this submit is basically the um, button to register and the button will have register written on it. So that's it for our register form. There's also one more thing that we need to add and that's this. So I'm just gonna type it out and then um, I'll explain to you guys in a bit. So earlier I stated that unique is equal to true basically means that there can't be two or more usernames that are the same. And that basically means that each username has to be different. And we have that set in the database, but uh, what about the form? So I'm just gonna type a few things and then I'll explain to you guys what it does and how it's going to um, distinguish whether or not that username already exists or not, so yeah. So this is the method that we've written. So what this does is basically validates or not whether there's been a username that's already similar to the one that we typed in, okay? So what it's gonna do is query the database right here. So uh, this variable, existing user username, what it's gonna do is um, query this database table by the username and checks if there is a similar username to what we entered in this right here. And then if there is one, then it's gonna raise a validation error stating that that username already exists and you need to choose a different one. So that's pretty much it for our register form. So what this basically does is it has the form itself right here and then um, checks whether or not uh, the username that we entered already exists or not. And if it does, then it's gonna raise this error right here. Okay, and now we can move on to creating our login form, which is basically the same thing, except we change a few of the words. So I'm just gonna copy this and then paste it down below. And then instead of putting register form, I'm just gonna put login form. And right here, it's gonna say login and that's it. So we're gonna be logging in uh, using our username and then by typing our password. And uh, in the next clip, I'll show you guys how to add this into our HTML pages. So now we can start um, adding our forms to our HTML. And then once we're um, done with adding them to our HTML, we can um, start registering and logging in users. So, but first I'm gonna fix this silly mistake that I made. So right here where it says from Flask import WT forms, instead of importing WT forms, we're gonna import Flask form, okay? And then I'm gonna start up my app, so python3 app.py, and then I'm just gonna go into Chrome and then type in localhost 5000 right here. And I'm just gonna go into the login page for now, and we're just gonna add these forms. So to do this, this is fairly simple. Um, I'm gonna actually add methods here too, so methods is equal to get and post. And it's gonna be the same thing in register too, so I'll put that there. All right, 
So now we can start. So for login, I'm going to create a variable called form, and this form variable will equal to login form, and I'm going to do the same thing for register, except for register, we're going to have register form, okay? And now I'm just going to pass this form into our HTML template, and to do that, I'm just going to do form is equal to form. So I'm creating this form variable in our HTML template, and that form variable will be equal to this form, which is this right here, okay? And um, I'm going to do the same thing in register too. So, that there. And then inside of here, I'm just going to create a normal form. So, form method post action. I'm just going to leave that empty for now. And then form.hidden underscore tag. And then form.username. Form.password. Form.submit. So, what this means right here, form.username it's basically going to get this right here and then for the password it's going to get this and then for submit it's going to get that and it's the same thing in register so I'm just going to copy this over and then put it into register right here and then I'm going to re I'm going to refresh this page so once I refresh it you can see that the form pops up and then if I go into the register page it's going to have the same thing there too and um, yeah so we have our form working now the final step is to register users log in users so now that our forms are um, available for us to view in HTML, we can finally start working on the registration feature. So to do this, I'm going to first import bcrypt and we're going to be using bcrypt to hash our passwords. So I'm going to do from flask underscore bcrypt import bcrypt. And then I'll just do bcrypt is equal to bcrypt and then app. All right, and now I'm just going to write down the code for registration and then I'll explain what it does in a bit. Okay, so what I've done here is basically uh, whenever the form validates, meaning that whenever we submit this form, we're going to immediately create a hashed version of this password. So um, right now, if I were to just type this in and not have this line right here, it would just have this password enter entered in as plain text. But we need to hash it in order for it to be encrypted and so that our registration process is secure. So um, we're first going to hash the password and then we're going to create a new user once it's been hashed and the username for that new user will be the um, username that we enter in right here and the password will be this hash password and then once we've created that new user we're going to add them to the database and then commit those changes and once you commit them we're actually going to redirect them to the login page and to redirect them I'm just going to import redirect which I've imported right here and then I'll just do return redirect URL for login okay and then right here I'm just going to um, have uh, my username and then a uh, password entered in and then I'm just going to press register. As you can see it redirected me to the login page and now we can check whether or not um, this user is also in the database or exists in the database. So I'll just open up a new terminal and then do SQLite3 database.db and then I'm just going to do select all from user with the asterisk and then a semicolon at the end and right here as you can see um, uh, the account that I created has been added so the username and then the ID and then this is our password so this is what I mean when it's hashed right here so our registration is uh, done now we need to implement logging in logging out and creating a user dashboard and that'll and once we finish that we're done with this app so to get started with login we're gonna first import um, login underscore user login manager login required logout user and current user okay and then I'll just paste some code right here and I'll explain to you what it does so this login manager part right here um, this is basically going to allow our, our app and flask login to work together to handle things when logging in um, loading users from IDs etc okay and this uh, load user callback 
this uh, well this user loader callback is used to reload the user object from the user ID stored in the session okay so with that being said we can start working on the login part all right so to do this I'm just gonna do if form dot validate on submit um, well actually before we do this we need to create the dashboard so um, in here I'm just gonna create a template called dashboard dot HTML and I'm just gonna have basic stuff right here I'm just gonna put uh, dashboard as a title and then I'm just gonna put hello you are logged in okay and then I'm just gonna create a route for it so at app dot route slash dashboard um, methods I'm just gonna copy this define dashboard and then we're just gonna return that uh, template all right so we have the dashboard created and we only access the dashboard if we're logged in so I'm just gonna put this login required all right and now we can start working on the login form so if form dot validate on submit um, we're gonna first query the user to check if they exist so user is gonna be equal to user dot query dot filter by username and that username is going to be the form dot username dot data not first and this is basically going to be used to check if the user is in the database or not and if they are then we're going to check their password hash so if uh, bcrypt dot check password hash and um, the, uh, the bcrypt is basically going to check the user's password and compare that to the form dot password dot data to see if they match all right and if they match then we're going to be logging in that user so login user and then return redirect to url4 dashboard okay and you'll understand this once um, this works all right so i'll just refresh this page and then i'm going to log in so when i press logged in it says uh hello you are logged in so how this works is whenever we press the submit button it first um, queried our uh, queried us to check if we were uh, registered or not by our username that we entered and then if we were registered then it checked our password um, and it compared our uh, password that's stored in the database to the password that we entered in and if those passwords matched then um, it logged us in and redirected us to this dashboard right here okay and now we just need to build the logout feature so to build logout it's actually very simple we're just going to do app dot route and slash logout methods is equal to get and post and I'm going to have login required because in order to log out you have to be logged in so define logout and I'm just going to do logout user and then return redirect URL for login okay so if I go to slash logout it logged me out all right and I'm just gonna add this uh, logout link to the dashboard so I'll just put a href URL for logout and then press here to log out. all right so let's log back in and then it brought me into the dashboard and then if I press this it's gonna log me out so that basically sums up this video um, I hope that you guys learned something from it um, and just to test our app to make sure everything's working or not, uh, let's try it again. So if I go into sign up, I'm just gonna put, well, first let's um, test out this validation feature. So this username already exists. If I press register, it should lead me to the login screen, but if it already exists, it's not going to. Okay, so it's not letting me. But if I were to put a username like one, two, three, four, five, six at the end or whatever, then I press register and then I put that same username right here and then press login. You can see it logs me in. So our app is working. Um, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, or anything you'd like to ask me, please feel free to leave them down, down in the comments below. Email me or DM me on Instagram, and I'll try my best to reply to you. Thanks for watching.